this tutorial we are going to implement user registration for react and it's going to register to spring boot and save the data to mysql and now we are going to create a registration form a user is going to enter his details and then he can register and be able to use those details to log in now we have the step by step here so if you look at the steps we have the step four implementing the registration and also the registration successful component because when a user successfully registered he's directed to a successful registration successful component or message that displays so let's go ahead to do this it's going to be quite easy and also clear so this is a normal application everything works like before we have the details view we have the update everything still works perfectly well so the step here says create the registration component that will contain the following fields. So let's go ahead to create the registration form. I'm going to the components directory and I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it registration.js. And I'm going to say RFC is going to be a functional component and this is going to be the registration form. Now the markup for this form is going to be using the material UI. So I've actually created this markup here. So simply click on this link on the link and just copy it and you can use it in the render section of your component. So instead of returning this div just return what we copied from that link so this is the registration component now we need to write the actual logic for this component now we need to hold the form data so we need a state to hold the form data so i'm going to create this state so it's going to be const okay so this is a state that is going to hold the form data we also need to hold the error that may occur. So I'm going to create another variable to hold the, an error that may occur. So then we also want to navigate to the registration successful component if this succeeds. So I'm going to use navigate. So to navigate, you have another hook called navigate. So I need a, a state called navigate and it's going to be use navigate as well. And it gets imported from React Router DOM which means you actually need to install React Router DOM as well. Okay, so now when you submit this bot, uh, you submit this form. When you submit this form, it gets submitted to uh, the endpoint where we have the register in the Spring in Spring Boot. But before we do that, we like to create the change handler for the input fields, so that when you enter data in the input fields, you want to update the state when they user enters in the in the input field so i'm going to create the handle chain function so let's create it as an arrow function and it receives the event and what does it do it's going to simply update the form data using the value of the field so it's going to be like this we are going to use a setter function for the form data we are going to use the spread operator to simply update the form data e.target.name is going to receive e.target.value. Okay, I think we are making progress. So now we are going to go ahead to handle the submit, right? So when we submit, we want to submit this form to the, U, to the endpoint that accepts this data and register the new user. But before I do that, I would like to create the registration successful components. So if we go back to, this, to the step-by-step, -step, um, I would like to create the registration successful component first. So because I'm going to navigate to the registration successful component, so it's better I just create it here. So it's going to be registration successful.js. The registration successful.js is a component that simply displays you have successfully registered. So there's actually nothing happening in that uh, component. So I'm going to use a functional component and the markup for this is also provided here. So I'm, I'm just going to copy everything. Uh, it's called registration success, okay? I'm going to copy everything and just re replace this. And I'm going to call this uh, registration success. Okay, so again, I would like to add, before I continue, I would like to add the routes for registration and registration success. So I'm going to my base component and I'm going to add those two routes. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it twice and use it for both the registration and the registration successful. And the element for, first let me just save everything. 
for the registration we are going to have registration and for the registration successful we are going to have registration success and of course if you try to visit registration success okay we have a number of things we are going to work on it uh, in registration yeah we are going to fix that okay so we have to handle the submit so what happens in the submit we are going to first i'm going to start writing the function const handle submit is going to be an async function because it's going to be making a, um, a, um, an API call so it's going to be an async request first we want to prevent the default behavior so we are going to just say prevent default because we don't want it to submit immediately we want to actually uh, perform some checks before we submit okay so we are going to check whether the password and the confirm password match so I'm going to say if in this case, the password does not match. So we are going to set the error message that's going to be displayed to the user. So it's going to be password does not match. So we now have to return, uh, clear the error message. So we set the error to nothing because this, sub, uh, this submission has failed. Okay, so assuming everything is fine, uh, we are going to now proceed to try to make the call, the API call. So I'm going to start with a try block. We are going to now make the call uh, to the API endpoint. So it's going to be const as a uh, response. We're going to expect the response to be coming from... We are going to use Axios and we are going to specify the location is going to be HTTP. If I can remember, it should be localhost at port 8080 and it's going to be the register endpoint and we are going to pass in the form data now the response comes back right if the response is the correct response in this case if the status is 201 201 it means that this user has been registered successfully so i'm going to check if the response code uh, is 201 so i'm going to say if the response the status response of status holds the status code 201 and we are going to navigate to slash registration success okay so if this is the case we navigate to uh, registration success else it means something went wrong so we are going to display the error message and we are going to simply set the error to be error text okay so this is the case where we have uh, either successful registration or not successful registration but there was a response that comes in however if any other error occurs we are going to cache that as well we are going to cache that error okay so this is basically the workflow um, there are a number of things we need to import for instance the container typography i think i can just go to product and look for those things and just import it they are coming from material ui so i'm going to copy this from product and i'm going to use it in registration so here in registration i'm going to paste this okay so what else do we mix we have text fields okay we have text fields so we have text field let's just check around i think everything should be fine so i'm going to save everything Okay, so I think we are good to be able to test this uh, uh, registration. So I'm going to go back just to make sure everything still works. But now we don't have the registration um, link. So I'm thinking we have to add the registration link here. By the way, if we just try to go to registration, uh, register, I think, let's see. we call it, uh, let's see, um, we call it, Regis registration that's what we call it so let's try to go to registration so i'm going to go to registration and we see that we have the registration right here but i'd like to add a registration button somewhere here around here next to logout so that we can actually just click on it to go to registration form so i'm going to go to the base component which is the app component or the sorry the app bar this app bar and you can see the logout here so i'm going to use an anchor tag for a and i'm going to do the href to b slash registration and i'm going to just call it register 
and let's try to see what we have so first i'm going to just go back home and we are going to click on register to see we we get to register right um let me also check for its registration success because i don't want to have error uh, later on so is it registration successful or registration success let's just check so it's registration success let's try to see because i want to have the correct error message uh, the correct uh, uh, success message okay there's a success page everything is fine so let's go ahead to try to register a new user before i do that i would like us to open the mysql database just to make sure that we are seeing the database we are working with is the product db and in product db we have a user if i go to user we have one user here so this is the user we currently use to log in. So this is the user we actually specified in our environment file. So if you go to the environment file, uh, you see this current user right here. Okay, so let's go ahead to go to try to do a registration to the list and let's go to register. And I'm going to click on register and it says an error occurred during registration. I'm going to open my console to check what this error might be. Okay, so let's check uh, let's check the method we used in the post request. So we have await Axios, right? So we actually should do Axios.post, right? So it's not just await Axios, Axios.post. Sorry for that. So let's go ahead to try one more time. So I'm going to save everything. And I'm going back here. I'm going to refresh the page. And I'm going to click on register and now it says you have successfully registered. You can now log in. But now we don't have the login component yet. If we go back to our database, if I refresh now, you can see we have this user right here. And we succeeded in creating a user using a registration form. And at this point, we can click on go back to login. So this is basically how to register a user. I can also recommend you maybe try to clean up this form to add some design if you want. In the next part, we now have to work on the login workflow to be able to actually use this user registered to actually log in a user. So this is a workflow just in case you want to see how it looks like. This is understanding React Spring Boot authentication workflow. This is how it looks like. So where are we? We've been able to do registration form, register, registration success page, all the way up to number three or part three right here. So in the next part, we now continue from the user login. I would like to thank you for viewing. I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. And we continue in the next part.